Good morning, Internet, and welcome to an oxygen not included tech tip on regolith melters. If you have seen one of my playthroughs, you saw me built this in survival mode. I've then gone and done some improvements and thought I'd do a tech tip video for people trying to get regolith melters working or, you know, kind of curious about them. They produce just a huge amount of power. So we'll go over the basics real quick couple of improvements I made on this design. So the obvious thing is you need a source of regolith. Whether you have auto sweepers or you have dupes that drop it off, it doesn't matter. The point is you need source of regolith dumped into a conveyor loader. Obviously you're going to need access to steel and preferably thermium for most of this. As you can see this doesn't have a cooling solution, it's just using the regolith, which means it's all running at 270, 290 degrees. You then take the cold regolith, 300 degrees being cold, run it down a rail, exchanging heat till it gets hot enough to melt and turn into magma. Once it turns into magma, that magma, when it condenses, turns into igneous rock. That igneous rock then flows the other way heating up the regolith and slightly cooling down. By this point, it's cooled down to 1200 degrees and then you can run a lot of steam turbines. Each of these doors is set to 200 degrees. As you see, all of these steam turbines are running full out and then these are sucking off some more heat. By the time the igneous rock gets down to here, it's down to around 125. I'm then cooling it down a bit more so I can use it in my base if need be. The cooling side is pretty simple. Anybody who's used a steam turbine knows you need a source of hot, bunch of steam, and a way of controlling how hot it gets. In this case, it's doors. If you're using volcanoes or anything else, same idea. You wanna use insulated blocks between each section so that they can control the temperature. Then you need aqua tuners to keep the steam turbines cool. And you also need to pay attention to how much water is coming back. If you use five steam turbines per drop off, then sometimes the pipe will back up. So it's better to keep it to four or less. In this case, I'm just using three because why not? Over here, I've got the solution for picking up the hot igneous rock. These conveyor loaders need to be upside down. So one end is in this pool of visco gel. The reason for visco gel is it won't run off the sides. So the visco gel gets cool, it cools down the conveyor loader. The shipping side is hot because the shipping side gets the igneous rock. So if you try to cool the shipping side, the igneous rock will react with the visco gel and boil everything. So it's important to have those upside down. See, so I've got these. Radiant pipes that are just touching the visco gel to keep it cool. This one end of the sweeper touches the visco gel, keeps it cool. It can see under the block. Same with those and this. This regolith melter happens to be run off of a hydrogen cargo rocket. You can run it off of any source of magma. Volcano, minor volcano, or magma biome. Suppose if you have a volcanic planet, you can get magma that way. The point is you need a hot side hot. You then need something roughly this shape. The reason for this shape is it will rotate the regolith through. At each one of these points, it will detect if the conveyor rail is empty. You see how this one says empty? So as soon as it reaches the bridge, it just disappears. And then if some make it past and they're not empty, They'll go around once they do empty this bridge will take care of that empty cargo. By having this C shape out of steel, this sensor, once you get some magma in here, will detect the temperature and inject heat as needed. In my playthrough, this was two tiles shorter and I was getting rocket exhaust heating all this up, which screwed it up. So I moved it up a couple of blocks and now the rocket doesn't heat this section up as bad. I still think I need to go up one. I've seen other people where they just use a diamond spike all the way down as opposed to regolith. The issue with that is 
This tile only has a mass of 100 kilograms. This tile has a mass of 1800 kilograms of magma and 800 kilograms of a diamond shift plate. So this can hold a lot more heat for a lot more time. Oh, here comes the rocket. So in a little bit, there's the rocket right there. It's tough to tell the heat, but you can see that temperature is going up and that warms up all the magma. This was just some regolith I dumped in here and then the rocket eventually melted it. You'll see when the rocket takes off again, a little bit of heat's getting down here, but not too much. Then as the igneous rock leaves, it then comes out, exchanges heat in each one of these tiles to help cool down the magma and warm up the regolith. And this particular design, because it's in space, here we go. You see that picks up a bit of heat from the rocket. This really should be one or two tiles taller. But because I built this in space, I have this convenient vacuum. So as excess magma gets created, if it gets this far, it just evaporates into space, which is fine. Doesn't happen too often, but when I used to have the rocket exhaust down too low, this would all get way too hot. And so this is what happens because of the rocket. This got a little overheated. It overheated this magma, so now I've got to cool it down more. As soon as it gets below 1406.9, we start getting igneous rock again, and the whole system starts up. This 100 kilograms of steam holds in so much heat that even though it turns off every once in a while, I'm still getting plenty of power. So that is the basics of a regolith melter. I used to have twice as many temperature exchange blocks, but I found that I was putting too much heat into the regolith and I wasn't cooling down the magma fast enough. So I took out a bunch so that this comes in colder. I used to have it coming in at closer to 1400 and really what I needed was more cooling from the regolith. It means more of it gets through here and cycles through here for a little bit, but that's fine. I want to cool the regular, cool the magma to get the igneous rock to get the power. I don't need, I've got plenty of extra heat to melt the regolith. So those are the basics. Obviously you need material behind the visco gel to exchange heat with. You need cooling solutions and obviously in a vacuum, which is very important. I got a hatch running around. When I first built this, I only had this one run of steam turbines, which was still more than enough power for my base, but I decided to add a second run of steam turbines to get more, get more heat out of the igneous rock, and then I can feed it to hatches or do other things. But after much trial and error, it is this design, whether you have it coming in straight this way and have it be C-shaped, or this kind of block in a block design that forces the magma to either come out in the middle or right here. So I don't get magma, you can see it popping out right there. So I don't get magma in weird places. That exchanges the heat efficiently and gets the magma out where I want it. So a nice quick tech tip, hopefully you guys will try some regular melters. This was the first one I built in game and I was rather surprised by just how easy it worked and just how much power I'm getting out of it. Again, because it's all in space, I was able to just use heavy watt conductive wire for everything inside because I'm not concerned about heat on the outside. So if you have questions, comments, post them. If you run into ideas or have other ways of doing regolith melters, I'd love to see them because this game is fun and having, you know, Having a whole bunch of people come up with different ideas and ways of doing things. Obviously in this one I had to go around a steam vent. I thought about trying to incorporate it into here to get the water out, but it just wasn't worth the effort. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you all um, give this a shot. I was very happy with this magma room up here. It worked much better than my original diamond spike. You all have a wonderful day.